Yeah. I was well, kidding. Hope I don't disappoint. No, no. I don't want to disappoint. I thought you'd have a beer belly. I don't really have too many nerves now. It's the it's the it's the leading up to this yesterday and today prepping everything. Each dish has, you know, five or six recipes to it, so you have to you have to actually do do them. You know, you gotta uh it's a lot. I've been just doing knife work all day today. Edison, I thought you'd be older, honestly. <laughs> Maybe I'm older than you realize. You got a good gig. I think the biggest thing for me that I'm looking forward to, um, I spent some time working in the culinary field before I actually got into brewing. There's the traditional way uh, or traditional styles of, of certain foods, but no matter who does it, there's always this character that comes through about how you choose to reinvent that or how you choose to bring it to the plate. Just you want it a little bit thicker, like that, mm -hmm. so she can set it on there. So the chip has something to kind of sit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to know how you see it, and I want to know how you taste it. So Just I'm really like looking forward to that. Food is very subjective. Exactly. And, and um, you know, when when I think of, I hate to keep beating this orange thing to death, um, but when I think of orange, I think of a lot of the things that I've put over the years with orange, and fennel, star anise. Oh, I love olives with orange. I love, um, I've used blue cheese with oranges before. There's lots of things that go with it. So, I mean, I think that a number of dishes can go with all these beers. Carbonation is one of the biggest attributes, if you ask me about beer. It has the ability to cleanse the palate, it has the ability to wipe away anything, and it has the ability to make your palate more perceptible to taste. Mm -hmm. I come from Denver, um, so it wasn't necessarily possible to do all these tastings, so I had to put a lot of trust in the chef, which was, as I look at it now, pretty easy, um, and our local team here, uh, to really kind of be my eyes and ears to how these things were gonna play together. This is one that I really was curious to see what you do. We've combined essentially two styles of beers. So we're not the first ones to do this, but I think we're the best ones to do this. It's got hops, it definitely has hops. There's no doubt, there's no hiding that. It's got the body and the citrus and the spice component of a, of a Belgian wit. So I'm curious to see what you think this will go with. Myself as a beer drinker, I'm, I have trouble with IPAs a little bit. Um, I think that people work into drinking IPAs. They're pretty, some of them are, are, are borderline offensive for me. Um, if they're obnoxiously bitter, I can taste hops just fine. You don't need to overdo hops just for me to taste them. It's not about flavor at that point. It's how, mon how much bitterness can yeah. I handle? You know, how macho can I look? Yeah, and I, I, this is so drinkable for me. So I thought with this, a lot of times with wine tastings, you know, you get a red wine that's big and fat and bold and can stand up to stuff. Other, other ones can't without being overpowered. Right. Uh, we're gonna use a beef tenderloin with it. We're gonna make a refined slider. It's going to be a little bit of uh, a little small blue cheese biscuit um, with a little bit of rare filet mignon in it and a little bit of horseradish cream on the top and a, and a veal demi glace on it. Pungent cheese with a little bit of the hop component. That citrus breaks through. That one, I think that one's yeah, really going to hit the mark. Uh, yeah, they're going to pair well. I like this beer. The next one we have up is uh, pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin, which uh, I got a clean glass. A little bit of story behind this beer. This is the uh, first seasonal that Blue Moon ever did, and this was actually introduced the same year that Blue Moon was in 1995. Um, and the thing that we like to, to note is that we were the first commercially available pumpkin beer across the country. What seasonal do you always see in everybody's lineup? Some version yeah, of pumpkin. pumpkin. I smell, I mean, again, it's subjective. I smell allspice and clove, and again, the orange is in there. Um, That's really great too. Um, well, when it gets this time of year and pumpkins and squash and acorn squash, butternut squash, I always, my one, my, I often am asked, what's your favorite thing to cook? You know, or what, what, what do you love to cook? And, uh, you know, because in this line of work, I cook all kinds of stuff all the time. Uh, but I, a lot of times my answer is, I love to comfy duck legs. When the fall comes, you, put, you get your jacket out and put your Levi's back on. Um, it's not quite there yet here, but I still want to eat that way. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to make a hash with butternut squash, chestnuts, uh, apples, a little bit of onion, and a tiny bit of bacon. I don't want the bacon to poke through too much. And I confit some duck legs with an orange glaze and some dried cherries in it. I haven't always been a huge fan of duck. Um, I grew up hunting yeah. and 
duck was one of those things that mom was like, don't bring that home. I grew up on that. And I think that was more or less because they had it so much. Have you had legs like this, though? You cure them, and then you cook them submerged in duck fat real slow. Right. So they're really super soft. Then you crisp up the skin. It's like bacon. It's dirt. It's really heaven. I had a sous chef sit with me and, 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 and taste with me. And uh, we both looked at that and said, it's like the rice milk thing that you know, in the kitchen I've drank it a hundred times and people bring it to work and you know you drink it with the rice in it. I thought, gee, I wonder how that's gonna be with beer. And that ended up being like way at the top of the list. It's really, really great. You add carbonation and the adult factor of alcohol. Yeah. I don't think you can go wrong. And I think this is ag exactly what it comes out to be. It's, it, it's all about using your senses. Oh, it's yeah. all about yeah, eating with your eyes smells, or your yeah. or your or using your senses, your olfactory. I love that you really get the nose of the cinnamon right away, but it doesn't beat you down. It's light, it's not thick, it's not too sweet. It's got the right body to resemble what a traditional horchata is. Big and bold and round. Yeah. No. I can't talk about it anymore. I need to try it. I'm I'm gonna make some crepes. And uh, just put a light chocolate mousse on the inside of it. Um, and we have this ancho uh, liqueur that we made a syrup out of. So a little bit of the chocolate and chili, which is also Latin influenced. I think we'll go great with this. We'll I think that's a fantastic of, idea. A light little cinnamon in the whipped cream that will be on it. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think that's it. One is, do you want to compliment? Do you want to, do you want to bring out spice components? Two is, do you want to contrast that? Do you want to take something that's a sweeter beer and match it with something that's really savory? Sounding on, on what you definitely decided to come up with these, I think we're going to get a blend of all that. And that's yeah. really what excites me when I've done, yeah. again, it goes back to seeing what you see through your eyes and, and, being, and, and, and how we do that is tasting your food. So yeah. I really look forward to that. Yeah, me too. It's going to be fun. Cheers. Cheers. A couple beers and some great food. Yeah, that's right.